songs with you. Everyone can tell and sing along. We'll begin by singing Coming Round the Mountain. Ready? Here we go. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain and splashing in the fountain. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. She'll be driving six white horses around the golf ball courses. She'll be driving six white horses when she comes. Oh, we'll all go down to meet her when she comes. Yeah, we'll all go down to meet her when she comes. Oh, we'll all go down to meet her and hug and kiss and greet her. Yeah, we'll all go down to meet her when she comes. We'll kill the old red rooster when she comes. Yeah, we'll kill the old red rooster when she comes. Oh, we'll kill the old red rooster and then we'll cook his keister. Yeah, we'll kill the old red rooster when she comes. Oh, we'll have chicken and dumplings when she comes. Yeah, we'll have chicken and dumplings when she comes. Oh, we'll have. Chicken and dumplings and eat until we're plumplings. Yeah, we'll have chicken and dumplings when she comes. Oh, she'll have to sleep with grandma when she comes. Yeah, she'll have to sleep with grandma when she comes. Oh, she'll have to sleep with grandma who snores like a buzz saw. Yeah, she'll have to sleep with grandma when she comes. Oh, she'll wear the red pajamas when she comes. Yeah, she'll wear the red pajamas when she comes. Oh, she'll wear the red pajamas that used to be her mama's. Oh, she'll wear the red pajamas when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. She'll be coming round the mountain and splashing in the fountain. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. Now here's a story we can all tell together. Listen carefully, and you can tell too about going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. Are you scared? No. Are you prepared? Yes. Here we are at a tall tree. Let's climb to the top and look around. Reach out and grab a limb. Reach up higher and pull. Pull higher, higher, higher. When I was a boy, my dad said, son, if you're going to climb trees, hold on tight. Let's all hold on tight and have a look over there. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look over there. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look down there. I don't see a bear. Let's climb down to the bottom of the tree. Down, 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 down. Here we go again. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. Are you scared? No. Are you prepared? Yes. Here we are in the tall grass. Put your hands together and rub them back and forth. The grass is so thick, we can't see anywhere. Slide one hand in and pull the grass back. Slide the other hand in and pull the grass back the other way. Now we can see. Let's have a look over there. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look over there. I don't see a bear. 
Let's have a look down there. I don't see a bear. Let's go to the end of the tall grass. Hands together, here we go. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. Are you scared? No. Are you prepared? Yes. Here we are at the rushing, raging, roaring river. Oh, the river is full of alligators. We can't swim across. They might bite our toes. Here's the plan. Let's back up. Farther, farther, farther. Okay. We'll count to three. We'll take a running start. When we get to the river, if we're going fast enough, we'll jump to the other side. If we're not going fast enough, we'll have to stop. Ready? One, two, three, go. Run, faster, 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 faster. We can't make it. Stop. Oh, let's back up farther. Farther, 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 farther. Okay, same plan as before. Ready? One, two, three, go. Faster, 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 faster. We can't make it this time either. Stop. Oh, we almost tripped and fell in. Let's back up again. Farther, 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 and farther, and farther, and farther, and... Oh, no. This is the tall grass. We can't back up any farther. Here's the new plan. We'll start off like before. We'll count one, two, three, go. Then we'll run as fast as we can. When we get to the river, we'll be going as fast as we can, so we'll jump as far as we can. If we get to the other side, if we land in the river, swim for it. Ready? One, two, three, Go! Run! Faster! 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 Jump! Splash! We landed in the river. Swim for it. Hurry! Swim! 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 Oh, we just made it before the alligators came. Oh, and we barely got wet. Here we go again. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. Are you scared? No. Are you prepared? Yes. Here we are, climbing the tallest mountain in the whole world. Reach up and pull yourselves over the top. Oh, oh that was a hard climb. But you know, we can see just about everywhere from here. Let's have a look over there. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look over there. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look down there. I don't see a bear, but there is a cave down there. Do bears ever live in caves? Should we go down and take a look? Should we go loud or... Soft. Soft. Okay, we'll go softly and tiptoe. Here we go. Slowly, carefully. Uh-oh, we're going faster and faster and faster. It's a steep hill. Look out for that rock and that log. Oh, we made it. Here we go again. We're going on a bear hunt. We're going on a bear hunt. Are you scared? No. Are you prepared? Yes. Here we are, tiptoeing up to the entrance to the cave. Let's be real quiet. It's mighty dark in there. Let's have a look behind this rock over here. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look behind this rock over here. I don't see a bear. Let's have a look behind this rock way 
back here. Roar! It's a bear. Run for your life. Up to the top of the mountain. Oh! Down the other side. Oh! Jump in the river. Swim for it. Hurry. Faster. Faster. Here comes the bear. And here come those alligators. Oh! Out the other side. Through the tall grass. Oh, the bear's still coming. Quick. Climb the tree. Ah! Uh, here comes the bear. Climb down the other side. Ah! Uh, Hurry, the bear is still coming. On the count of three, we'll go in the cabin and close the door. One, two, three, boom! After we closed the door, I heard a huge thump on the other side, and I have to find out what's there. Come on, tiptoe with me, please. One, two, three. Now, up on our make-believe tiptoes. Slide open the slot by the peephole. Look over there. I don't, I don't see, see a bear. bear. Look over there. I don't, I don't see, see a, bear. a bear. Look down there. Oh, oh, there's the bear. Oh, dear. He knocked himself unconscious, but he's starting to move again. Quick, over to the closet. Open the door, reach up, take down the camera, close the door, camera strap around our necks, back to the front door, one, two, three, camera ready, up to the peephole, take a picture of the bear, click. Well, we went on a bear hunt. We went on a bear hunt. Were you scared? No. Were you prepared? No. Well, thank you very much. Here is a story everyone can help tell about a boy who keeps making mistakes. It's called Silly Jack. Jack was a boy who lived with his mother in a little house way out in the country. Times were pretty hard, and it was about time for him to go school clothes shopping. But he didn't have any money. So one day his mother turned to him and said, Son, I've been talking to the dairy farmer who lives up the road. He's behind in his chores, so I want you to go up to the dairy farmer's tomorrow and help him with his chores, and take whatever he pays you and bring it home so we can make ends meet. Jack said, Yes, ma'am. That's a part we can all say together. Jack said, Yes, ma'am. So the next day, Jack got up and put on his work clothes and went down to the dairy farmers. The first thing he had to do was clean out the barn. Jack took a shovel and he scooped and scooped and shoveled and shoveled until the barn was all cleaned out. When he was through working that day, the farmer gave Jack a shiny, solid silver dollar. Jack held that dollar in his hand and started for home. About halfway home, Jack came to the bridge over the creek. He stopped on the bridge, looked down in the water, and he saw the fish swimming down there. Jack thought, oh boy, I'm going fishing this weekend. And he was watching the fish so hard he forgot about the dollar in his hand. The dollar slipped out of his fingers. Kaplunk, it landed in the water. Jack went down and splashed around looking for the dollar but couldn't find it. He just got all wet and muddy. When he got home, Jack's mother took one look at him and she knew what happened. She said, Jack, where's the sense you were born with? That's another part we can all say together. She said, Jack, where's the sense you were born with? She said, son, when someone gives you some money, don't hold it in your hand. Put your money in your pocket so it'll be safe and hurry home with it. Jack said, Yes, ma'am. The next day, Jack got up and put on his work clothes and went down to the dairy farmer's. He brought in the hay and the feed for the cows. And when he was done working that day, the farmer gave Jack a great big can full of milk. Jack did what his mother had told him. He poured the milk down in his pants pocket. Blub, 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 blub. When Jack went home that day, his socks went squish, squash in his shoes and his underwear stuck to him. He walked into the house and his mother knew right away what happened. She said, Jack, 
Where's the sense you were born with? She said, son, when someone gives you some milk, don't pour it down in your pants. Balance the milk up on top of your head and cover it with your hat so the shade from the hat will keep the milk cool. Then hurry home with the milk so it doesn't spill. Jack said, Yes, ma'am. The next day, Jack got up and put on his work clothes and went back down to the dairy farmers. Jack got off work early, about midday that day. After cleaning up around the barn a little more and putting some paint on the fence rails behind the barn, and when Jack got through working that day, the dairy farmer gave Jack a great big chunk of butter. Jack did what his mother told him. He put the butter up on top of his head, splock, and covered it with his hat, blip. And he started home slow and careful so the butter wouldn't spill. Well, since Jack had gotten off work early, it was about midday. It was late summer, just before school started, and it was hot that day. When Jack got home, that butter wasn't a chunk of butter anymore. It had become a river of oil that had melted and run down and soaked into his clothes, making them look like old oil rags. He walked into the house, and his mother knew right away what happened. She said, Jack, where's the sense you were born with? She said, son, when someone gives you some butter, don't put it up on top of your head. Take the butter down to the creek, where the water is cool and clear and clean. Find some leaves and wrap them around the butter. Then dip the butter wrapped in those leaves in the cool, clear, clean creek water so the coolness from the water will soak into the leaves and keep the butter firm. Then hurry home with the butter. Jack said, Yes, ma'am. The next day, Jack got up and put on his work clothes and went back down to the dairy farmers. He worked hard all day that day, and at the end of the day, he got to do something he'd always wondered about. Jack knew that milk came from cows, but he wasn't sure just how you milked the cows. He asked the dairy farmer, and the dairy farmer showed him. So for his last bit of work that day, Jack got to milk the cows. He sat down on the stool right next to the cow, put the bucket up underneath her, and started milking. Zoop, zop, zoop, zop, zoop, zop, squirting the milk into the bucket. And that was a lot of fun. But even more fun was when the little kitty cats, who caught mice around the barn, came in and went, meow, meow, brrr, brrr. And Jack saw the kitty cat, so he went, zoop, zop, squirt, squirt, zoop, zop, squirt, squirt, <laughs> and squirted the milk at the kitty cats. When the milk splashed on their noses, they went, <laughs> licking the milk off their whiskers. The dairy farmer saw how much fun Jack was having, so when Jack was through working that day, the dairy farmer gave Jack a cute, cuddly little kitty cat. Meow. Jack did what his mother told him. He took the kitty cat down to the creek, wrapped her in some leaves, and dipped her in. Blah, 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 blah. Meow. The kitty cat didn't like that very much. It jumped up, scratched Jack on the ear, bit his nose, tore his shirt and ran off into the bushes and wouldn't come back. When Jack got home that day, his mother took one look at him and she knew what happened. She said, Jack, where's the sense you were born with? She said, son, when someone gives you a kitty cat, don't go dip it in the creek. Get a piece of string. Gently tie the string around the kitty cat's neck and then carefully pull the kitty cat behind you in the road as you come home and say, here kitty kitty, here kitty. Jack said, Yes, ma'am. The next day, Jack got up and put on his work clothes and went back down to the dairy farmers. Jack worked hard all that day. He got to drive the tractor, pow, 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 and load up the hay bales from the field. And when he was through working that day, the dairy farmer gave Jack a great, big, delicious ham. Jack did what his mother told him. He tied some string around the neck of that ham and then carefully pulled the ham behind him in the road as he went home, saying, Here, kitty, 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 here, kitty. When Jack got home, all he had left of that ham was a slick, shiny bone and six hound dogs that wouldn't go away. His mother saw him and those dogs coming into the yard when he got home, and she knew right away what happened. She took her broom and chased the dogs away and turned to Jack and said, Jack, where's the sense you were born with? She said, son, when someone gives you a ham, don't drag it in the road. Pick the ham up and carry it on your shoulders, so nothing will take it away from you. Jack said, yes, ma'am. The next day, Jack got up and put on his work clothes and went back down and worked for the dairy farmers.
It turned out this was the last day Jack was to work at the dairy farmers because Jack worked hard and got the farmer caught up on all of his chores. He painted some of the barn and tightened up the screws on the barn door hinges, and when he was done working that day, the farmer gave Jack his very own dairy cow. <laughs> Jack did what his mother told him. He crawled up underneath that cow and heaved her up on his shoulders. <laughs> then he started home with the cow swaying in the breeze. <laughs> The road home went around a big bend at the bottom of a hill. Way up on top of that hill was a rich man's house. The rich man had a beautiful daughter who had never spoken a word in her life. The rich man had had doctors from all over the world come and examine his daughter. Each one of those doctors had agreed. The only way this young woman is ever going to talk is if some young man can make her laugh. The rich man had said, Any fellow who can make my daughter laugh can have half of my wealth and he and my daughter can get married when they're mature enough and if they feel like it. Well, that day she happened to be sitting on the swing on the front porch, swinging back and forth, reading a book and drinking some lemonade, when Jack came along on the road at the bottom of the hill with that cow on his shoulders. Ma! She heard the cow bawling, looked down over the top of her book, and saw Jack. He was the silliest sight she had ever seen and she simply could not help herself. She burst right out laughing. <laughs> Kinda startled herself too, because she'd never made a sound before. Well, her father heard her laughing and ran around to the front of the house, saw that Jack had caused the laughter, ran down to the bottom of the hill, stopped Jack, and made Jack put the cow down. He gave Jack half of his wealth on the spot and explained the whole arrangement with the young woman. She came down off the top of the hill, and she and Jack were introduced. They became fast friends, and they decided they just might get married, when they were mature enough, and if they felt like it. Well, Jack took his money and his cow home, and last I heard, he and his mother were doing pretty well. And you know, no one has ever again said, Jack, where's the sense you were born with? I reckon they think he keeps at least some of it in the bank. That's the story of the fella we used to call Silly Jack. Here's a song to sing together about Bill Grogan's goat. There was a man. There was a man. Now please take note. Now please take note. There was a man. There was a man. Who had a goat. Who had a goat. There was a man. Now please take note. He loved that goat. He loved that goat. Indeed he did. Indeed he did. He loved that goat. He loved that goat. Just like the kid. Just like the kid. He loved that goat. Indeed he did. He loved that goat just like a kid. One day the goat. One day the goat. Felt fit and fine. Felt fit and fine. Ate three red shirts. Ate three red shirts. Right off the line. Train. Now when that train came into, came into sight, that goat grew pale, that goat grew pale and, green with fright. and green with fright. Now when that train came into sight, that goat grew pale and green with fright. He heaved a sigh, he heaved a sigh as if in pain, as if in pain. Walked up the shirt, up the shirt and flagged the train. songs. 
When the music ends, turn the tape over for more tell and sing along fun. Hi again. We're back to move and sing along with Jimmy Crack Corn. The verses tell us what to do. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. Jimmy Crack Corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. Here's a verse for Jenny. Jenny Crack Corn and I don't care. Jenny Crack Corn and I don't care. Jenny Crack Corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. Right hand up this time. Right hand up and I don't care. Right hand up and I don't care. Right hand up and I don't care. My master's gone away. Left hand up this time. Left hand up and I don't care. Left hand up and I don't care. Left hand up and I don't care. My master's gone away. Both hands up this time. Both hands up and I don't care. Both hands up and I don't care. Both hands up and I don't care. My master's gone away. Nod our heads this time. Nod my head and I don't care. Nod my head and I don't care. Nod my head and I don't care. My master's gone away. Right knee up this time. Right knee up and I don't care. Right knee up and I don't care. Right knee up and I don't care. My master's gone away. Left knee up this time. Left knee up and I don't care. Left knee up and I don't care. Left knee up and I don't care. My master's gone away. Both knees up this time. Both knees up and I don't care. Both knees up and I don't care. Both knees up. And I don't care, my master's gone away. Now we can wiggle all over, wiggle all over, and I don't care. Wiggle all over, and I don't care. Wiggle all over, and I don't care, my master's gone away. Here's another verse for Jenny. Jenny crack corn, and I don't care. Jenny crack corn, and I don't care. Jenny crack corn, and I don't care, my master's gone away. And here's another one for Jimmy. Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn, and I don't care, my master's gone away. Here is a story to tell together about why cats do something pretty unusual. It's called crab and jaguar. Crab liked to play games, and every day just before midday, crab would crawl across the sand right next to the sea. He would come down next to the water, and he would look out over the sea. He would say, "Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll out over the deep blue sea." That's a part we can all say together. He would say. Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll out over the deep blue sea. And pop, pop, crab's eyes would pop right out of his head. Boogity, 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 boogity. They'd roll out over the sea. Crab could see the most amazing sights and shapes and colors. But crab was careful to only play the game a short while. Then he would say, "Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll back." Roll back home to me. That's another part we can say together. He would say, "Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll back, roll back home to me." And boogity, 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 pop, pop. His eyes would roll back across the sea and pop back into his head. He was careful to play the game only a short while each day, because Crab knew living in the bottom of the sea was the terrible, horrible gobbledy gollum fish. And every day, about midday, the terrible, horrible gobbledy gollum fish would swim up to the surface of the water and feed. Crab also knew the terrible, horrible gobbledy gollum fish loved to eat eyeballs. So Crab only played the game just before midday and only for a short while each day. One day, Crab had just finished playing the game, and as he was turning to go back and take a nice nap in a shady place, Crab heard a gruff voice say, "Crab!" Crab looked over his shoulder, and there was Jaguar, the huge, ferocious cat. "Hello, Jaguar. How are you today?" said Crab. "I'm very well, thank you," 
said Jaguar. And I've been watching you play your game, and I want you to teach me how to play. Oh, that would be very nice, said Crab, and we could play together. Come back tomorrow, just before midday. It's too late to play the game again today. I don't think it's too late, said Jaguar. And I don't want to come back tomorrow. I want to play the game today. Oh, but you don't understand, Jaguar, said Crab. We can't play the game right now, because out there in the sea is the terrible, horrible gobbledygollum fish. Pretty soon it's going to be swimming up to the surface of the water, where the eyeballs go when we play the game. And the terrible, horrible gobbledygollum fish loves to eat eyeballs. If we play the game right now, it might eat your eyeballs, Jaguar said. I don't care anything about a silly fish. I want you to help me play the game now, and if you don't, I'm going to eat you. Gulp. What choice do I have? thought Crab. Very well, Jaguar. Lay down and face the sea. Jaguar did what Crab said, and Crab crawled around behind Jaguar. Crab put his claws up on Jaguar's hips and said, Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll out over the deep blue sea. Pop, pop. Jaguar's eyes popped out of his head. Boogity, 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 boogity. They rolled out over the sea. Jaguar said, I can see the most amazing sights and shapes and colors. Okay, you can bring my eyes back now. So Crab said, Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll back. Roll back, back home, home to me. me. Boogity, 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 boogity. Pop, pop. Jaguar's eyes popped back into his head. Whew, said Crab. We were lucky. Come back tomorrow, just before midday, and we'll play the game again. I don't want to come back tomorrow, said Jaguar. I want to play the game again right now, and you know what'll happen to you if you don't help me play. <clears throat> Very well, said Crab. Jaguar lay down again, and once again Crab said, Eyes, little eyes of mine, roll out over the deep blue sea. Pop, pop. Jaguar's eyes popped out of his head. Boogity, 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 boogity. They rolled out over the sea. Jaguar was seeing amazing, wonderful sights, when all of a sudden, swimming up from the dark, murky depths of the sea, came the terrible, horrible, gobbledy gollum fish. Nope. Nope. It swallowed each of Jaguar's eyes. Jaguar said, Crab, something's gone wrong. Bring my eyes back quickly. I can't see anything. Crab? Crab? Where are you, Crab? Crab, you better bring my eyes back very quickly. Crab? Crab, I'm warning you, Crab. Crab? Crab? Please bring my eyes back. I can't see. Crab knew something had gone wrong, and quickly had scuttled across the sand and hidden under a rock. Jaguar was at first frightened, and then angry to cover his fear, and then sad that he hadn't listened to Crab. Jaguar lay on the sand and moaned and cried, Oh, I've lost my eyes, I can't see, what am I going to do now? Just then... Jaguar heard the sound of wind rushing through huge wings. Whoosh, 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 fluff, 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 fluff. Who's there? said Jaguar. A voice said, It's me, Vulture. Hello, Jaguar. Oh, hello, Vulture. How are you today? Jaguar replied. I'm very well, thank you. I see you've lost something very precious. Something someone who lives in the jungle must have to survive. Something without which they will die and be eaten by others. Oh, you're right. I've lost my eyes. I don't know what I'm going to do without them. Well, Jaguar, said Vulture, suppose I could get you a new pair of eyes. Would you do anything I asked for me if I could? Oh, yes, said Jaguar. I'd do anything you asked. Anything at all if you could get me a new pair of eyes. Anything at all? asked Vulture. Oh, yes. Yes, anything at all. Please, please help me. Please get me a new pair of eyes if you can, said Jaguar. Very well, said Vulture. Stay right here. I'll be back soon. 
Jaguar lay still as he heard the sound of wind rushing through huge wings once again. Fluff, 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 whoosh, 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 whoosh. Jaguar lay still for what seemed a great, great long time. And then Jaguar heard the sound of wind rushing through wings again. Whoosh, 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 fluff, 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 fluff. Vulture dropped a new eyeball into each of Jaguar's empty eye sockets. Plop, plop. Oh, I can see again. I can see again. Oh, this is wonderful. Thank you, Vulture. I'm kind of hungry. I believe I'll go and catch myself something to eat. Bye now. Not so fast, said Vulture. Remember your promise, Jaguar. You said you would do for me anything I asked. And I want you to do something right now. Uh, what do you want me to do? Jaguar asked. Well, said Vulture, you and all of your other relatives in the cat family are much better hunters than I and many of my cousins who fly. So what I want you to do is this. Go and hunt, and when you catch something and kill it, you may not eat all of it, but you must leave a little of it for me and many of my cousins to come and eat too. You must also be sure that all the other cats in the world and all the other cats ever born do the same thing too. Well, will you do it? asked Vulture. Oh, yes. Yes, that's easy enough to do. I'll gladly do it. Thank you, Vulture. Bye now. And so Jaguar went and hunted and soon was feeding. But Jaguar did not eat all the food. Jaguar left a little for Vulture and his cousins, who do not hunt very well, to eat too. That's the way it's been since the day Crab and Jaguar played their game. So if you've ever wondered why it is whenever a cat catches something to eat, it does not eat all of the food, but leaves a little for the birds, now you know why it is. And that's the story of Crab and Jaguar. Next, we'll tell a slightly scary story about a ghost with one black eye. <laughs> there once was a small town. Through this town ran a big road. Up and down this road were many kinds of buildings. There were businesses and churches and shops and stores and many homes. Among all the other buildings was one huge, empty, old mansion. It sat up on top of a bare, rocky hill on which nothing grew. Everyone in town knew about the old place and called it the house. Everyone said, don't go up that hill, don't go near, much less into the house, because it's haunted by the ghost with the one black I <laughs> And so, no one for miles around would go up the hill, near, or into the house. But one day, a new family moved into town. In this family was a father, macho macho, <laughs> and a mother, hubba hubba, <laughs> and a brother, duh, <laughs> and a sister, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and a cute, cuddly, teeny, tiny baby, Gucci Gucci Ouch, <laughs> who was always chewing on something. The new family needed a place to live, and the only empty place in the whole town was the house. Everyone in town said, don't buy the old place, don't move into it, because it's haunted. And they told them about the ghost, but the family said, eh, we're afraid of nothing. So they bought the old place and they moved in. They scrubbed and cleaned and painted and arranged things until the place looked really nice. They had the rugs on the floors, the paintings on the walls, the curtains by the windows, the furniture just where they wanted it. Now just about every evening the family would gather up in one of the rooms of the house where there was the fireplace. They'd make a big fire in the fireplace and they'd sit around talking and singing and reading books from the library. That's where the family sat one evening, while the wind whistled around the outside of 
the house. When all of a sudden, everyone in the family realized the baby's diaper needed changing. So the mother turned to the daughter and said, Sweetheart, would you go upstairs and get the baby a clean diaper? The daughter liked to help out, so she said, Sure, Mom. So the daughter put down her library book, climbed the stairs, walked down the long hall, walked into the dark, gloomy bedroom, and heard a voice say, I am the ghost with the one black eye. The daughter just about jumped out of her shoes. She screamed and raced downstairs. She raced into the living room and said, I'm not going up there anymore. There's a ghost up there, and I'm scared. (laughs) The brother was one of those kinds of kids who likes to tease, and he said, Frady cat, Frady cat, you're just a Frady cat. I'll get the baby a clean diaper myself. So the brother put down his library book, climbed the stairs, walked down the long hall, walked into the dark, gloomy bedroom, and the brother heard a voice say, I am the ghost with the one black. <laughs> the brother just about jumped out of his shoes. He screamed and he raced downstairs. He raced into the living room and he hugged his sister. <laughs> and he said, I don't b- b- blame you for b- b- being scared, sis, because I'm scared too. <laughs> the mother of this family was like every mother everywhere. She knew her children really well. She had this power called ESP because she was an extra smart person to know her children so well. She thought, I know what my children are up to. My children have been bringing home books from the library, and those books are about boys and girls who play tricks and pranks. She turned to her son and daughter and said, Children, there is nothing to fear. I'll get the baby a clean diaper myself. So the mom put down her magazine, climbed the stairs, walked down the long hall, walked into the dark, gloomy bedroom, and heard a voice say, I am the ghost with the one black <laughs> The mother just about jumped out of her skirt and she screamed and raced downstairs and raced into the living room. She hugged her children and said, I don't blame you two for being scared because I'm scared too. <laughs> The father of this family was one of those kinds of people who never admits to being afraid of anything. Macho, macho. (laughs) He turned to his family and said, There's nothing to fear. I'll get the baby a clean diaper myself. (laughs) So he put down his magazine, climbed the stairs, walked down the long hall, walked into the dark, gloomy bedroom, and heard a voice say, I am the ghost with the one black <laughs> He just about jumped out of his pants and he screamed and he raced downstairs. He raced into the living room and hugged his whole family. He said... I don't b- b- blame you all for b- b- being scared, because I'm scared too, Wempo Wempo. <laughs> now by this time, we can all imagine the baby's diaper needed changing worse than ever. <laughs> so the tiny baby said, I'll get a clean diaper myself. <laughs> so the poor, helpless, defenseless, tiny little baby toddled up the stairs toddled down the long hall, toddled into the dark, gloomy bedroom, 
and heard a voice say, I am the ghost with the one black eye. And the tiny baby said, And if you don't give me a clean diaper, you're going to be the ghost with the two black eyes. <laughs> the tiny baby came downstairs with a clean diaper, and that was the end of the ghost with the one black eye. Here's another song to share called Go Tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. The old gray goose is dead. The one she's been saving. The one she's been saving. The one she's been saving to make a feather bed. She was a good goose, she was a good goose, she was a good goose, her name was Winifred. She died in the mill pond, she died in the mill pond, she died in the mill pond, a standing on her head. The gander is crying, the gander is crying. Weeping. The goslings are weeping, the goslings are weeping because their mama's dead. We'll put all her feathers, we'll put all her feathers, we'll put all her feathers in the great big feather bed. Go tell Aunt Rhody, 